I'm going to introduce the keynote speaker for today. Dan Carroll was born and raised in southern Louisiana, grew up surrounded by the sounds of the New Orleans jazz scene, this New Orleans for those of you who don't realize there's a difference between, no, and when you really live there, it's what? He wowed them at an early age that, despite the childhood fire that robbed him of his hands, he would become a professional drummer. His pursuit and achievement of his dream inspired thousands of people and launched his second career as a motivational speaker. Dan, is, Dan also serves as an ambassador for the Shriners of North America. Let's give Dan a big District 30 round of applause. Dan I come from New Orleans. 
100 degrees, ha! <laughs> well, imagine 200 times. Very intense. So I was screaming and crying. And over the city noise in New Orleans, the lawnmower, my mom heard me, a little two-year-old baby in a garage distant from where she was. And as though it were scripted in a movie, comes dashing in to save her two-year-old son, who she found literally cooking like a piece of meat. Now you know how you have to score a ham, or else it'll just kind of blow up on you in the microwave? Or in the other? Well, when the paramedics got there, my body was so hot, they actually had to score my entire body. They cut slits down the, all of my uh, arms and legs and torso to allow my body to breathe. I was boiling and about to burst. My mom was experiencing all this. They took me to the charity hospital in New Orleans, which is a great trauma facility, the only burn unit in the whole region at the time. And they gave me a, yeah, optimistically, a 20% chance of survival. But they knew that it was practically no chance of survival. They diagnosed me with third and fourth degree burns over 80% of my body. And I'll break it down for you. First degree burn, very superficial burn, like a sunburn. If you've ever got any kind of skin irritation, it's not that big of a deal. It's got lotion and cream to throw off the sun. Second degree burns, burns through your skin, kind of blisters, can cause some major problems, but still not a, pretty, not a substantial burn, unless it's widespread. Third degree burn, burns through your entire skin layers, and your muscle tissue. Muscles actually start to burn. This burn is very serious. Seek medical attention. Use heavy antibiotics, anointments to keep it covered. Fourth degree burn is the most severe burn of all. Generally, when people sustain fourth degree burns, they either die or they lose their limbs. Well, as you can see, I lost my limbs, but I also died. I've been dead three times. Total of 25 minutes. As a result of my I lost my fingers. I lost toes on my left foot. Initially I lost my nose. This is rebuilt. I lost my lips, eyelids, ears. You know when you have a wound? You have a bandage on it and it sticks sometimes. That's what happened here. My fingers were so brittle, my skin was non existent, and the bandages started sticking to the open wounds of the fingers. And as they started to unwrap my hands to do a routine vessel change, the fingers pulled off the body. Now, everything I'm telling you is not. From my memory. I've created memories based on the stories of all of the first responders who have been so overwhelmingly grateful that met my ER staff at the charity hospital, the firemen, the paramedics who arrived on the scene, and of course I've interviewed my parents over the last 29 years. I've been there 29 years. I wanted to experience what they experienced. Because honestly, I don't know who suffered worse. Me, who experienced it firsthand, well actually no hand. I call this <laughs> I call myself no hand name. So I might make some hand references, don't worry, don't be offended. You know, it's all good. Don't, if I'm not offended, I, I like to play with it. You gotta have fun with it. If 
But like I said, I don't know if it's something worse. They are my family. They have everything. They can't get it out of their head. They witnessed my hands falling off. My toes falling off through a window. Help me. Unable to do anything. Except my father dropped to his knees and begged God to take me. So that I couldn't, I wouldn't suffer. I know what that was. But a lot of these injuries can be prevented. A lot of it's just negligence. I was talking to the fireman, sitting, uh, waiting for one of my five flights that were canceled yesterday. And he said, he was a fireman, he said, you know what, you, know, you wouldn't even imagine, he's actually here, he's spoken. And he said, you wouldn't even imagine some of the calls you get for, for, for the types of fires there are. People throwing tiles, towels, white in front of gasoline, water gas powered water heaters with open flames. Expect that not to light up. Since you couldn't you couldn't even imagine some of the negligence and ignorance of people. And these are easily preventable. That's my fire. Sorry for burning everything. But there was an organization that took over because during that 72 hour period that I was at the charity hospital in New Orleans, I was the door I had died three times. There was an organization called Triangles who said, this, we have a hospital set ready to go. It's in Boston. It's specifically a burns hospital for children. We have everything set up. We have a medevac standing by, ER staff ready to go, a bed ready for us. This is your only chance. I don't think he'll survive another night in this hospital. And here's the catch. There is no catch. The care is free of charge. Zero costs. Some of the top-notch, cutting-edge technologies that the Shriners Hospital provide, free of charge. Now you're looking at a product of the Shriners Hospital. Now back when I was there, it was 1982, so technology wasn't as involved as it is today. But I've had 80 surgeries. All through the front. Zero cost for travel, hotels, for food, for bandages, for medicines, for prescriptions, for surgeries that cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. You're basically looking at a multi million dollar day. <laughs> But I didn't have to pay a dime for it. Could you imagine my life without that? I couldn't. I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have any quality of life. There's my picture. No, no picture. No, anyway. But it's been such a phenomenal gift. And I look at everything as, as blessed. Every single detail in my life. I look back and say I never had a bad day. Because I found out how to change how to change pets. It's really easy. In my opinion, our past is just a memory based on this reality. It's perspective. It's an intention. And if you can shift that perspective from one of negativity and adversity to opportunity, you got it. You just changed the whole life. And it happens instantly. In the East, they have a term called satora, which means instant awakening. I think some of the great avatars of our, of our known world, such as Buddha or Krishna or Christ or whoever, non-religious, I'm not talking about religion here. I think they understood this simple perspective shift. And every day can be a miraculous, glorious experience. No matter what your state is, no matter what your adversity, no matter what your struggle, you can have abundance and enjoy and like Just by your attitude. You know, a good friend of mine, Dr. Wayne Dyer, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, he's written like 100 billion best-selling books and all that. Anyway, he thinks he's a movie star now. He's got a movie called The Shift. 
But he had a book called Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. And it was based on the teachings of Tao Te Ching. And it's all about attitude, it's intention. It's about how you perceive your life. And if you have a resentment, shift that resentment. If you have doubt, change that. Why are you living in that life? You know, we, you start now, this is the present, this is the only moment we have. Right here, right now, nothing can be done about that. You're here, and you have a choice. A, wisdom. B, joy. Which one are you going to choose? The choice is yours right now. Make the right one. Which one's going to make you feel better? Oh, I hate my life. It sucks. Oh, that feels really good. No, it doesn't. You know what I have to say? I love that. Because yesterday I had major delays. I got on and off the same plane four times. <laughs> and I finally said, I need a drink. So I went to the bar and I sat down and I said, you know what? I have a choice to make. I can start to be upset about this. I fly constantly. I almost made the, the 1K club at United. Got 96,000 miles last year. I should have just taken a day trip for a lunch in uh, Hawaii or something, but I, I didn't. But anyway, I met this woman who just graduated law school. Apparently, she's having a rough time. And I said, you know what? This is why I'm delayed. I have an opportunity to inspire this woman. I said, just some simple little one, five-minute conversation. <laughs> and it made the whole day work. Believe that? You know, there's a great speaker named Keith Harrow, and uh, he recently passed. He's sort of a, a mentor to me, even though I've never met the man. But he says, you know, you can, even traffic, I know you guys got a lot of traffic out there, you know? <laughs> he goes, even traffic is a blessing. Traffic is a blessing. You know, and he made a point, I saw a talk that he gave, and he says, you know, we spend so much time commuting in our cars that we can get four year education in two years. You know what I'm saying? So why, what are you doing? You're probably sleeping. You're going to wonder, where's this red light going to change? Or where are these people in the road range? It's all coming out. You know what? Just drive a little slow, get all the way in the right lane. Don't worry about anybody. Listen to your stuff. I do audio books all the time. One thing I love to do is educate myself. I like to be informed and educated and up to date on the current science, modern science, and psychology, and just evolution in general, because I'm curious. The mind is a phenomenal thing, and that's what's guiding the whole thing. Nothing else. It's individual creativity. And it's people's intentions that are creating these global shifts. And it starts with an individual. It starts with you. It starts with you. Could you imagine what the Wright brothers would have done, how their lives and how aviation would have turned out if they we're looking at their plans and said, yeah, this thing won't fly, but we'll build it anyway. Do you imagine how different things would be? They had that dream. They had a vision. Nothing or no one was going to say no. Nothing or no one was going to say no. Passion. Enthusiasm is a powerful force. And it can move mountains can rebuild lives, it can create miracles. When I was five years old, I was in kindergarten and people didn't accept me too much. Hey, I may have left a little different than that. Hey, I played with them. I thought, you know, they called me a monster. And uh, I said, you know what, no, I'm an alien. <laughs> But there was a, a thing that everybody was doing. They were all tying their shoes. They were becoming very independent. And that was the one thing I couldn't do on my own, was tie my shoes. And I needed that for independence. All I cared about was equality, period. And I beat this thing every day. I wanted to do that. I beat all my doubts away. And I beat my fears away. And I had to ask every single day for help. And it was miserable. But finally, 2,555 days later, which is seven years, that quick. Uh, I succeeded with my goal. How long would it take you to quit with that? That's 
not show his off. It doesn't matter. Live with passion. Live with enthusiasm. And I'm going to play a little bit of drums and back this up. And thank you so much for being here.